Welcome back, everyone. We're headed out of Las Vegas and up into Arizona for a multi-part winter adventure. And have a look at the scenery for a moment. We just love this area where the desert meets the mountain forest. Right here outside Flagstaff. We got the whole crew loaded up and you can see they're getting antsy. Been in the car for a few hours now and we're looking for a place to stop and explore. That's when we saw a sign for Walnut Canyon National Monument. Let's pull over and park the Jeep and see what it's all about. Here's an overview of Walnut Canyon. You can see the visitor center and we're going to explore three areas today. First is the easy and scenic rim trail. Second is the steeper and up close island trail. And last is a quick look at the Pueblo and Pit House just off the parking lot. Let's start with the rim trail. This easy 0.7 mile trail is fairly level and takes you along the canyon rim through juniper and pinyon pines. You can really get a feel for the size of the 400 foot deep canyon. The limestone here was carved out by Walnut Creek, which goes on to feed the mighty Colorado. At the first overlook, you can see the visitor center and notice the numerous cliff dwellings below. Depending on the calculation methods used, Walnut Canyon's peak population may have been as few as 75 people or as many as 400, with at least 80 separate rooms, including residences, storage, plazas, and terraces that have all been documented along the canyon as pictured here. In the background, you'll notice the island trail beginning its descent, where we're headed to next. Let's finish out the rim trail here first. This would be a good place to have some binoculars handy also, as once you look around, the amazing cliff side dwellings are everywhere. Here's the view from the end at the second overlook, and now we're heading back to the visitor center down the island trail. The rangers here are excellent in providing any information you need. They also have a gift shop inside, and the views from the lower level terrace are outstanding. Now let's head out back and down the island trail. It does get icy, especially on the shaded side, and they do close the trail when this happens. So make sure to check ahead if you come during the colder months to be certain. Along the trail you'll see 25 dwellings and notice many others perched across the canyon. Are you ready? The well-preserved cliff dwellings at Walnut Canyon were home of the Sinagua people, who lived in the area between about 1100 and 1250 AD. Archaeological excavations revealed that the Sinagua were skilled farmers and traders who grew crops like corn, beans, and squash on terrace fields near the canyon bottoms. They also gathered wild plants and hunted game like deer and bighorn sheep in the surrounding mountains. Their trade network was broad and included other cultures granting them access to a wide variety of goods such as shells from the Gulf of California and obsidian from volcanic fields to the west. And here we'll come across some of the first up close and personal views of the dwellings. It is not clear why the Sinagua people eventually left the area but it is speculated that a combination of factors like the changing climate and overuse of resources may have played a role. The Sinagua people are considered to be part of the larger cultural group known as the Ancestral Puebloans, which includes the Hopi, Zuni, and other cultures that inhabited the Southwest U.S. It isn't long before we come across another set of rooms where the natural mortar is still very intact. It appears a huge rock wall sheared off, allowing them to create a natural alcove beneath. Very interesting. Heading up this rock ledge now, we're going to take a look back at that beautiful canyon blanketed in snow. 
Imagine this front porch view. Up ahead, we come across what I call the toadstool huts. Look at this neat little community of rooms and patios. It's cozy in there. The back loop of the trail where it is shaded did get icy as mentioned earlier, so even if the trail is opened, be prepared for such conditions. A look up at the visitor center where we're headed, and it's time to climb the stairs back. Right off the parking lot, you can see a reconstructed pueblo and a pit house, which were semi-subterranean structures used for both living and storage. A quick inspection of the signs and then it was back to the jeep and time to find a camping spot before we're driving around in the dark like usual. The winter adventure continues next episode where we'll explore further east in Arizona. But for now, enjoy this clip of us setting up camp for the night and we'll see you next time. Down, Down the, the dusty, dusty trail. trail.